Good morning and happy Wednesday. Gosh, I feel like every part of this book now is just a page turner. It's impossible to put down. I totally see how people get hooked on these books. I am, I'm hooked. Um, I wanted to show you, so the next few pages only have, it's mostly a blank page, but with the spider details on some of them. I wanted to show you an up-close version of the, an up-close view of these spiders. Because it looks like they have like a little skull on them. Or on some of them. They're pretty neat. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to hold the book. It's much easier for me to read when I hold the book up like this. So if you want to go back and pause and look at those spiders, you're more than welcome. But I'm going to hold it up like this for now. Okay, Snape swept past Harry, making no comment about Hermione's empty seat and cauldron. Sir, said Malfoy loudly, sir, why don't you apply for the headmaster's job? Now, now, Malfoy, said Snape, though he couldn't suppress a thin-lipped smile. Professor Dumbledore's only been suspended by the governors. I dare say he'll be back with us soon enough. Yeah, right said Malfoy, smirking. I expect you'd have father's vote, sir, if you wanted to apply for the job. I'll tell father you're the best person here, the best teacher here. Snape smirked as he swept off around the dungeon, fortunately not spotting Seamus Finnegan, who was pretending to vomit into his cauldron. I'm quite surprised the mudbloods haven't all packed their bags by now, Malfoy went on. Bet you five galleons the next one dies. Pity it wasn't Granger. The bell rang at that moment, which was lucky. At Malfoy's last words, Ron had leapt off his stool, and in a scramble to collect bags and books, his attempts to reach Malfoy went unnoticed. Let me at him, Ron growled as Harry and Dean hung on to his arms. I don't care. I don't need my wand. I'm going to kill him with my bare hands. Hurry up, I've got to take you all to herbology. Oh, sorry, hurry up, I've got to take you all to herbology, barked Snape over the class's heads as they and off they went, <laughs> crocodile fashion, with Harry, Ron, and Dean bringing up the rear. I don't know what crocodile fashion is. If someone knows, please leave it in the comments. And off they went, crocodile fashion, with Harry, Ron, and Dean bringing up the rear, Ron still trying to get loose. It was only safe to let go of him when Snape had seen them out of the castle, and they were making their way across the vegetable patch towards the greenhouses. The herbology class was very subdued. There were now two missing from their number, Justin and Hermione. Professor Sprout set them all to work with pruning uh, ab uh, ab uh, Abyssinian? Abyssinian shrivel figs. That's what I'm going to call them. Harry went to tip an armful of withered stalks onto the compost heap and found himself face to face with Ernie McMillian. Ernie took a deep breath and said very formally, I just want to say, Harry, that I'm very sorry I ever suspected you. I know you never attack Hermione Granger, and I apologize for all the stuff I said. We're all in the same boat now, and, well, he held out a hand and Harry shook it. Ernie and his friend Hannah came to work at the same shrivel fig as Harry and Ron. That Draco Malfoy character, said Ernie, breaking off dead twigs. He seems very pleased about all of this, doesn't he? Do you know, I think he might be Slytherin's heir. That's clever of you, said Ron, who didn't seem to have forgiven Ernie as readily as Harry. Do you think it's Malfoy, Harry? Ernie asked. No, said Harry, so firmly that Ernie and Hannah stared. Oh, so it must have been a no. So firmly that Ernie and Hannah stared. A second later, Harry spotted something that made him hit Ron over the hand with his pruning shears. Ouch! What are you... Harry was pointing at the ground a few feet away. Several large spiders were scurrying across the earth. Oh, yeah, said Ron trying and failing to look pleased. But we can't follow them now. Ernie and Hannah were listening curiously. Harry watched the spiders running away. Looks like they're heading for the Forbidden Forest. 
and Ron looked even unhappier at that. At the end of the lesson, Professor Sprout escorted the class to their Defense Against the Dark Arts lesson. Harry and Ron lagged around behind the others so they could talk out of earshot. We'll have to use the invisibility cloak again, Harry told Ron. We can take Fang with us. He's used to going into the forest with Hagrid and he might be some help. Right, said Ron, who was twirling his wand nervously in his fingers. Er, aren't there, aren't there supposed to be werewolves in the forest? He added as they shook their, as they took their, I'm tripping over my words today. He added as they took their usual places at the back of Lockhart's classroom. Preferring not to answer that question, Harry said, there are good things in there too. The centaurs are all right, and the unicorns. Ron had never been into the Forbidden Forest before. Harry had entered it only once and had hoped never to do so again. Lockhart bounded into the room and the class stared at him. Every other teacher in the place was looking grimmer than usual, but Lockhart appeared to be nothing short of buoyant. Come now, he cried, beaming around him. Why all these long faces? People swapped exasperated looks, but nobody answered. Don't you people realize, said Lockhart, speaking slowly, as though they were all a bit dim, the danger has passed. The culprit has been taken away. Says who? said Dean Thomas loudly. My dear young man, the Minister of Magic wouldn't have taken Hagrid if he hadn't been 100% sure that he was guilty, said Lockhart in the tone of someone explaining that one and one makes two. Oh, yes, he would, said Ron even more loudly than Dean. I flatter myself a touch more to know... Blah. I flatter myself, I know a touch more about Hagrid's arrest than you do, Mr. Weasley, said Lockhart in a self-satisfied tone. Ron started to say that he didn't think so, somehow, but stopped mid-sentence when Harry kicked him hard under the desk. We weren't there, remember? Harry muttered. But Lockhart's disgusting cheeriness, his hints that he always thought Hagrid was no good, his confidence that the whole business was now at an end irritated Harry so much that he yearned to throw Gadding with Ghouls, the book, right in Lockhart's stupid face. Instead, he contented himself with scrawling a note to Ron. Let's do it tonight. Ron read the message, swallowed hard, and looked sideways at the empty seat that was usually filled by Hermione. The sight seemed to stiffen his resolve. And he nodded. I think that's where we're going to stop for today. Have a great day.